lots happening globally. Yeah. Uh, let's start off with uh, the PMI, uh, PMI numbers that we saw uh, in China yesterday, a little bit softer. Here in South Africa, though, PMI at 60.4, uh, which is the highest since March 2007. So it seems that South Africa, although we were lagging in the beginning, we've now surpassed some of the countries. That's right, and I think it's, uh, it took a lot of people by surprise. Uh, they were looking for an improvement, but nothing of, of the order of this. And you take that in, in uh, conjunction with a lot of the other high-frequency uh, economic indicators we've had recently, uh, and it's adding up to a situation that says we're probably, and I'll highlight probably, going to see somewhat better economic growth uh, in total than, than we, we, we're, we've been currently um, looking at for, for the, rem the remainder of this year. So uh, that's telling you that the PMI at this sort of level says manufacturing uh, is going to be uh, quite a bit better when we get the next print of that in, in, in a couple of weeks' time. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's actually very, very encouraging indeed. What, what is lacking at this point in time is an indication, is an indication that the consumer is coming back mm. and forth. As we said before, it's a, it's a combination of unemployment and the application of the National Credit Act. Of course, we know that uh, manufacturing, obviously, uh, that takes up first uh, before we actually see the consumer come back into play. Interesting, though, uh, taking a look at uh, Japan's jobless rates at 4.9% in January from 5.2% in December, it seems that there the consumer is starting to show signs that there is some kind of recovery occurring there and the manufacturing sector and the exports are actually assisting the consumer and, of course, the employment number as well in that country. Yes, indeed. As you say, uh, unemployment is a lagging indicator, mm. so one would expect to see that. I think we must always be very, very wary of, of, of Japanese data. You know, for so long, the Japanese have held back from, from, from really splurging out and, and, and consuming. And their, their economy really has, has had substandard growth for, for, for many, many years. So this may, uh, and again, I'll highlight this, may be a little bit of a blip. Mm. Okay, EU officials visiting Greece. Uh, some kind of bailout package seem, seems to be uh, on uh, the focus now as well. 25 billion euros is what they're talking about. On the other end, we know the UK is also experiencing some trouble. Uh, Sterling coming under pressure. Elections also underway in that country. Apart from that, also a very big budget deficit, current account deficit. Uh, if we compare the likes of Greece and the UK, are you concerned that perhaps we're seeing the same troubles emerging? In certain aspects, we are. Uh, the, as far as Greece is concerned, I don't think it's gr uh, Greece uh, per se that's the problem. I think it's, it's, the, it's the concern that there could be a contagion into some of those other pigs countries, things like Spain, for example. Spain's four or five times the size of the Greek economy. Uh, and if you ever had a, uh, a systemic um, uh, bit of contagion into, into the, the, the Spanish market, that could be serious. Now, the UK, it's eight or maybe nine times the size of the, of the Greek economy. Greece itself, I, I, I keep having to say, is not that big a deal. It will be bailed out, I've got no doubt about it, but the structural adjustment program that comes thereafter is going to be very, very painful indeed and will last for many, many years. Now, uh, take that situation, apply it to, to the UK situation where you've got a budget deficit of 12% plus, where you've got uh, a nation of people who've got very, very used to spending on credit for the past 20 years or so. And then all of a sudden you say to them, no guys, no more credit, no more spending, you've really got to start uh, lowering your mm. sights. Um, it's going to be very, very difficult for whichever um, government comes in uh, after the May 6th uh, general election. May 6th is, 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 is what uh, is looking uh, very much like the, what the election date's going to be. So if you have a hung parliament, in other words, there's no clear majority, um, it's seen by the markets as being possibly a weak government and one that isn't going to fully address the, the, the problems we just mentioned. That being the case, they see it uh, taking a lot longer for, for the situation to resolve itself and hence they're selling Sterling down. Sterling uh, was very weak last night. I saw a couple of fund managers in Scotland last night were saying that uh, they're, they're looking for 20 to 30 percent drop in the value of Sterling. And that would take it well below parity against the euro. Mm. So you could be looking at a collapse. But that's not sustainable though, Chris. Well, at the end of the day, you, you, you've got to bear in mind uh, what has actually happened to, to, to the UK economy. Structurally, it, it's not nearly as sound as it used to be. Their manufacturing base has all but gone. They're living in a situation where it's, it's, it's largely a service economy, and, and, and a large part of that is financial services. So if that's going to be in the doldrums for some time to come, um, then if they're going to maintain any sort of equilibrium, then the currency has mm. to take a bit of a beating. Weaker sterling, weaker euro, it's going to be good for exports out of that region in the long run. It should be. No, you're quite right. But uh, as part of that, you have to, in, in a structural adjustment program, you've got to get your, your manufacturing base up again and running. Mm -hmm. and, and in a country like the UK, where that manufacturing base has, as I say, all but gone, 
how do you revive it? How do you resuscitate it? It's, 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 it's not that it will happen, I agree with you, but it won't happen overnight. Mm. We've had lots of results out here in South Africa, some good, some bad, some slightly disappointing. The rand holding up relatively strong, despite the fact that we've seen quite a lot of different economic data out in South Africa. Taking a look at the earnings, Chris, are you confident that things will turn around uh, in 2010? Mm. I think there's a growing confidence coming through. I went to the, the Bidvest presentation yesterday and Brian Joffe gave a very, very masterful presentation. He was incredibly relaxed. And I think this is, again, I have to highlight one of the beauties of going to a presentation, a real life presentation, rather than watching a fairly sterile webcast. Because then you have the ability to talk to a number of the people involved. I was talking to um, uh, Brant Pretorius afterwards, who runs the, 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 the motor side. And he's as relaxed as I've seen him in a couple of years. Yes, they've taken a lot of pain. Uh, but it looks like the motor side is now turning. And you, 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 you talk to Joffe, he's very, very relaxed about the situation. Um, th this is a company that's so incredibly diversified that it's managed to, to, to weather the storm, the, the recession, beautifully. The question now on, on most investors' lips is, is it, does it have what it takes to really start pumping again in the way it used to? Look, I think it's so big uh, that it's, it's doubtful for, uh, in, in, it, in its present form whether it's going to manage to, to get back to the kind of 15, 20, 25 uh, percent growth rates that we, we, we got used to uh, maybe 10 years ago. It's an incredibly well-run company. No one's denying that for a moment. Uh, at these levels, um, I'm still a little bit dubious that one should be jumping in and buying it. But, mm. um, you know, for the very long term, it's, um, it's still looking very, very Could good. Would you be jumping in and buying anything at this stage, Chris? Not really. Not really. <coughs> Why Excuse not? Excuse me. Um, <laughs> I think there's just a lot of uncertainty out there. A lot of nervousness, a lot of uncertainty. We're not sure what the, the economies of the world are going to do. The US economy, uh, they revised their, their growth um, figure for the, the other day, 5.9%, I think, uh, for the last quarter. And that's, that's fantastic. But how much of that was due to stock rebuilding? And again, I keep on uh, harping back on the, on, the, on the bit about employment. Unless and until we get people coming back into the workforce and spending, particularly where you have economies where consumer spending is so important, like, like ourselves, for example, and like the US, where 70, 75% of it is, is consumer spending, then the recovery won't be sustainable. That's why I say I think a little a bit of caution at these levels is justified, and particularly given the fact that our ratings are, are still relatively verified. Speaking of the consumer, sign off said to release results today. What are you expecting there? Yeah, I think. Um, you know, a, a relatively flat performance is what I'm looking at from, from Steinhoff. They've, they've, they've been a, a great performer over the years, and I don't think their, 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 their rating fully, just, uh, fully reflects that, um, that, 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 uh, that performance. Um, and we'll only get that a uh, little bit later on this morning. Mm. You know, they're operating in quite a difficult market, uh, particularly in Europe, in terms of trying to sell the, the, their, their furniture in there. Uh, but they've been remarkably successful up until now, and uh, I would expect uh, pretty much um, more of the same. But, um, but in terms of, uh, of the actual earnings growth, I think relatively flat. Uh, looking at the construction sector, um, we've got Group 5 set to release results today. WBHO came out with positive results. Murray and Roberts under pressure. Avenge also saying that they expect to have uh, results that will also show that the company is not doing as well as it should be doing. What are you expecting from Group 5 today? Yeah, look, I think it's going to be a bit better than Murray and Roberts. It's, it's, it's a more manageable operation. It's a much, much smaller operation than, than, than Murray's. Um, and look, but let's, let's not uh, kid ourselves, they're also into big contracts with Eskom, for example. I went to a presentation there last year where they highlighted the fact that they do have large Eskom contracts. One of the things that emerged from the Murray's presentation is the fact that uh, in many instances they're, 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 they're not getting paid, they're having to wait uh, for an, a long time to, to actually get the payment. To put, uh, just to put some, some color on that, um, if you take Dubai Terminal 3, the airport, they built that, and that was completed in October 2007. They still haven't been paid. You know, so this is crazy stuff. So I think we have to look at a lot of these contractors' um, figures that are coming out, and and interrogate them as to as to what the payment terms are, when they're getting paid, how they're getting paid, and um, are, are they comfortable with, with with this? Look, I think Group Five is sitting in a, in a much better situation than, than Murray's, and you mentioned WBHO. That's been an absolute star for the past 15, 20 years. They've hardly put a foot wrong. 